You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. Hey. Good morning. Uh, sorry. Alan Aguirre with uh, the Chameleon Church Show coming to you live and direct from the Wasatch back of Northern Utah and our co-host, Leonard Parada. How are you? Real good. Good, good. Hey, um, I, I got to share this with you. So just, I know it's probably easy to just sometimes think, oh, you know, Alan, come on, Alan. It's not that whatever, you know. You're just exaggerating, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> So I think it's always important to give the information so that people know that, you know, that's not necessarily the case all the time. I'm sure maybe it is sometimes, but not all the time. So um, as you know, uh, last night on our Monday night gathering, right, we discussed at length the, um, the, where we were in our process of elimination of whether or not last night's visible new moon crescent the new moon was going to be a um, first month of a bib <clears throat> new moon, which would begin the, the spring f feasts in the next two weeks, or was it a leap year 13th month? And then we, you know, we were sharing all the various findings and all the various ministries that we were following and how this ministry was just, you know, not one that we could rely on or that we should probably not listen to or things of that nature. And um, so we were doing that. We did that last night. And um, so the the first ministry that we talked about, that um, we talked about a, a certain ministry last night, the first one we talked about, where they literally was, they were literally doing um, Passover like a month ago like three or four weeks ago, and I mentioned it somewhere online, um, that the leader of this group had asked his people in faith to observe Passover like last month and, um, and that he would go and find the Abib to justify it come, uh, come first fruits. And, and they were saying a bunch of goofy stuff. I mean, it was just, it was just like, yeah, this, this is just not correct. Anyway, the reason why I'm bringing it up again is because I know somebody in that group and they reached out to me last night to say hi and to find out where we were at and, we, we, and I explained to them we were going to be uh, entering a 13th month and they were like, yeah, we're entering our first month. I go, well, that doesn't make sense because if you can't be entering your first month right now if you, were, if you entered it into it a month ago. I go, but you guys did Passover like three and a half weeks ago. And then apparently this group has split so they've had an internal conflict regarding this issue and now they're divided the group is divided and some of them decided to go with this other person's reports that we had on our list that we literally didn't that we that we just never talked about last night and the other half you know whatever but apparently the the leader of this group that asked his people to observe passover in faith which is just the weirdest thing to even say, um, was out and was apparently when he was out in Israel a month or so ago to, to do this, was decided to concentrate on barley fields used by the Karaites in the 10th century. Yikes. That's nuts. Is it? What's the probability that these fields are still there after a thousand years I, mean, I think of that talking head song this was a parking lot now it's a full go. of daisies yeah got it yeah got it there you go. why do people have to get so stinking weird <laughs> here's something i didn't mention last night that i thought was interesting that this same group was talking about they were taught to justify they're doing Passover in winter. They were saying, he, this is what he, they literally said this on their website, on their newsletter, that when Joshua crossed the, uh, the Jordan around, around Passover, that uh, the reason, they said the waters were heaped up, that's because there was ice. 
Oh my gosh! And when Mo, when Moses crossed the Red Sea, they crossed it. It was ice. And it's another like, well, and another proof that it was winter. Uh, well, when Jesus when, when Jesus was taken into court, Peter was sitting by a fire at night because oh it was cold God. because it was winter and then there was ice in the in the red sea when moses cried i am not kidding this is literally on their newsletter to justify them being out there so early in the year and the reason why i'm sharing this is not to shame anybody that's why i'm not using any names but just to let you know you have to have discernment you really need to know what you're talking about and what you're doing because there's a bunch of wackos out there yeah. doing wacky stuff and coming up with wacky reasons to justify why they do what they do. That's a cartoon. I'm sorry. That's 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 and, and, we just, and we want you, whether you whether you believe you're an affiliate affiliated with us as Chameleon Church or just passing through, we want you to be really careful. And this is why we warn you from the very beginning of the feast book don't go online and look this stuff up because the majority of the people out there are charlatans they don't know what the hell they're talking about they're making stuff up as they go along icebergs oh jewelry. my gosh and yeah, so yeah. what's the difference between us and them well we're not going to tell you crazy crap like that we're going to put we're going to send you back to the bible what does the bible say figure it out oh uh. That's it's nice. just amazing. But I'm exhausted. You know, this last week really wore me out thinking about this constantly and trying to suss it out and figure it out. And what are we going to. So I'm a little bit relieved that we've called it. Today's the first day of the 13th month, and I'm good. That's right. And we're not going to cross any icebergs to get from across the Jordan with Joshua oh or to get across oh the Red Sea. It's like Narnia when they're on that broken piece of ice and he's got the sword and he's using it to navigate. That's how they got across. <laughs> it's, so, it's so ridiculous. Oh, man. And my favorite, you know how you could tell it was winter because Jesus died, you know, around a bib, right? Jesus died on Passover. Peter was outside and there was in front of a fire at night. It was cold. <laughs> Flick. That's nuts. Talk about anyone can be a pastor lenny <laughs> anybody can be a pastor and anybody can lead a group of people you know here's the thing and i said this before cult leaders cult leaders don't freak me out i understand why they're doing what they're doing it's the people that follow them that freak me out blindly oh my gosh so That's stick to your serpentine group we got a lizard over here <laughs> an unclean animal lizard yeah yeah oh man i just had to share that because this is what i was talking this is what i was doing at midnight talking with this person going oh my that's nuts that's the that's the worst thing the jordan having ice oh my gosh icebergs give me a break it's in their that's, newsletter that's the funniest yet it's, oh it's just weird God. it's just really weird so anyway Chris isn't with us this morning. He's I know. Busy in the tropics. I know. With his Land. family. What the heck? Who just gets Drinking up and goes to Hawaii? Drinks with the little uh, uh, <laughs> umbrellas. Umbrellas in him. Hope he doesn't poke his eye out with an umbrella drink. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's Chris? laughing at. He's watching, laughing at us right now. Guys. Yeah, he is. Uh, I told him I couldn't be on the show because I was gonna go whatever. Yeah. That's funny. Have, have a good time with the fam. Yes. Yes. When she we'll, was we'll, we'll worry about what month we're in. Don't worry about it. We got it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Mm. So, uh, look at everyone. Crazy saying, week, huh? Yeah, everyone's saying it's Trigger Tuesday. It's like the new, the new thing now. Trigger Tuesday. Arrgh. There's so many things out there to be triggered. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, from the national yes. scene, the politics. Oh my gosh! So, but yeah, I went. So last night, I just I was just like so unburdened, 
And I'm like, to Christina's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, it's been a crazy week. You know, Alyssa, I asked Alyssa, we were talking, Alyssa and I were talking, and I go, do you, other than you, I don't know anybody else physically that is bothers with any of this stuff. You know, I mean, because I don't know these people in Israel personally, uh, you know, little things, like, but you're the only other person I know personally, Alyssa, that is bothering with figuring out this stuff. The, uh, and she works hard at it. Yeah, the dates and all this stuff, you know, so it's like, it's just you and I, it's like, how did we get stuck with this? And I don't even know if she, if she even likes it or if, um, if she just, you know, but she loves it. I think so. Because I mean, I remember when I asked her to help me with it, when we first started doing the calendar, you know, and we're both like, so and, and her assumption is we might be a day off a day ahead. What do you mean? She said last night on with our own, with the oh, calendar. for next year. Yeah. I mean, for next month. Next month. Yeah, probably a day or two. Yeah. Dude. It's that's why, that's why it's, we have to wait for the, uh, the, we have to see the next month's new moon to, to know. I know. And then like we do every year, as soon as we see that moon, I'll print or I'll, I'll post uh, the dates of right. everything leading up to the beginning of the Omer count, which is, see, the Omer count, the Omer count is interesting because the Omer, card, <coughs> the Omer count begins at the end of first fruits the feast of first fruits the feast of first fruits occurs at the end of the first sabbath following passover within unleavened bread right so you can have passover based based on whatever day passover falls on you could have passover and then like let's say you have passover on a sunday night first fruits isn't going to be until the following saturday night there's a whole week there right inside of unleavened bread but you could have Passover like on uh, in, on, the, on during Holy Week. Passover was on a Wednesday, and first fruits was that Saturday when he rose, right? So that's like only a matter of four days, three or four days. But it could be up to a week long. So we have to. So we can actually suss out based on the new moon projections when first fruits is going to be. But if we're off by one day, then we could either be a week behind or a week ahead, right? The beginning of the Omer count, because you, because at that point, if you can, if you can determine when the Omer count starts on first fruits, the first Sabbath after Passover, within unleavened bread, then you know when Pentecost is going to be. Then you can project. That's why we can hard code in the calendar. Is this the new one or the old one? This is I the old the one. one right here. That way, we. That's why we can hard code and project. When Shavuot is the the the, the our, our conference, yeah, interesting stuff. But and you, it's in line with what Jesus said. He goes, "You got to watch." For, yeah, and for a pastor to say, "Oh, just agree with me in faith that we're going to do Passover oh. here," you're taking not only the what Moses wrote, but what Jesus had to say. Yeah, out of context. Totally. Whereas, as an equipping ministry, we're. Tr- whether you get it or not, what we're trying to do is the reason why we we bother explaining all this stuff. So like last night, it was like, huh, we we didn't get as many questions as we thought, Alyssa said. I go, yeah, I think they're all, they're just over it. <laughs> but the reason why we go through the pro, the process or even why, why do we even bother? Well, we bother it trying to explain it and break it down and give you all the tools you need in the understanding of how we come to these, how this works. It's so that you can do it for yourself. One day the internet will be gone. They were, they're going to turn this off. I, I, I've always thought that I don't know why, but if they turn the internet off, I can't talk to you anymore. So we're trying to equip you to the, you know, it's like, if I if I if I if I give you a fish dinner, that's one thing. But if I can feed, teach you how to fish, you can feed yourself. It's the same principle, and that's what Jesus was trying to do with his disciples. Literally, he was literally instead of just going, "Ah, eh, I'm Messiah. Don't worry, I've got this." <laughs> no, because he's leaving. He's like, "No, I'm trying to equip you to be able to do this by yourself." To the extent. I'm not going to leave you as orphans. When I do leave, I'm going to ask the Father if he'll give you the Holy Spirit so that you can actually continue in this. He'd frustrate them to no end because they would say, 
tell oh. us, tell us what it, oh. tell us what to do. And he's, and then he would tell them a parable. Yeah. And they, they pull out their hair going, I, yeah. I, I don't understand it. My favorite one is when they're like, when he brings up the, the bread and he's like, and, and they're all mumbling on the boat. He's, he's pissed. He's mad at us because we didn't bring any bread and he yells at him. What is wrong with you? Why do you think I'm talking about bread when he brought up about the leaven? Right. You just fed 4,000 people with nothing. He's just like at the end of his rope. He's like, I'm going to leave here in a few weeks. <laughs> and you guys are you stupid. Figure it out, boys. <laughs> oh, man. So that's why we take the time and break stuff down. And, and that's, that's why we do, we do all that. So that you can f suss it out and figure it out. That's what's called working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But I also fully, completely understand that he made some of us apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors for the equipping of the saints, for the maturing of the saints to do this. So I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. This is why we do it, uh, and we know that not a hundred, not a hundred percent is going to go. Yeah, we're into it. Teach, let us know. No, um, that's okay. But that's there's a reason why we, we break it down like that, and why we and the reason why I told you what I told you at the beginning of the top of the hour was because you need to know there's goofy people out there, and there's more of them than there aren't. There's more goofiness than there isn't goofiness, and we have to be aware of that because they will lead you down goofy roads, you know. <laughs> It's just weird. This weird. I mean, people do that. It's like, it's another version of that not having a fear of the Lord. Okay. Like those two worship people we were talking about the other day. Oh, man. IHOP is. That. What, they're a mess, man. What a shipwreck that is. They so, are a mess. We're going to have. have we, we, we will. This week, we will. We were going to publish a. A statement as chameleon church regarding that for you guys because we have we have mentioned these people we have endorsed certain people or we have referenced certain of these people so and if you don't know what we're talking about that's okay i'm glad you don't know what we're talking about if you don't know what we're talking about right. but we, we're going to give a like a official statement about it because well What's weird is some of the people that should be putting out statements that aren't, that had these people in their churches ministering as early as, 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 early as last fall. They haven't said anything yet. And we're like, yikes. I know. I think uh, this one's hit them and taken them off their feet that they're like backpedaling. When, and when, when should I do this? I know some very good friends of mine down south that are very very close to these people and their their heads are spinning right now because they see so many things falling apart because of the lack of just being able to let their yays be yays and their nos be nos well you know you know talk talking to christina about this she's like isn't that interesting because what does jesus say the example he gave was many on that day will come to me and say Lord, what do you mean you don't know me? We what if, here and here's what they qualify themselves as being known. We healed the sick, Scary. we cast out demons, we spoke in tongues, we prophesied and we raised the dead. Charismatica. There you go. And we're watching a major global charismatic ministry just get ripped to shreds by the they're just like their limbs are just being yanked off of them. You know the Lord loves them, and he's and he said he will shake it to the core and rip it down. And unfortunately, the human psyche, oh, they're, the way they connect the dots is see charismatica bad. Charismatica isn't right. God. Charismatica is Condolini. Charismatica isn't for today. Charismatica, there are no real prophets. There are no real because you got to remember we're talking Kansas City prophets. There you go. Where the heck is Lou Engel in all this? I anyway, haven't heard a thing. Anyway, right? So this is all this does is convince the majority, 80 plus percent out there, the 80 plus percenters out there, that they're, they've been right all along not to 
getting swept away by the charismatic movement and here's their proof and we're like and then they, and all that does is support the, the the matthew you know lord lord because mo most humans nine out of ten humans don't have the wherewithal to go that's man that's not the holy spirit that's man that's not god you know and because they're lazy and they're dumb according to proverbs and they're not going to do the actual work of sussing all this out which is what they're supposed to be doing right you need to know you're in the desert you need to know whether you should go with Korah or whether you should go with stay with moses and you're like doing this Korah is talking about taking me back to, to egypt I want to go back to Egypt. That's the, we want a leader to take us back to Egypt. We're not. We're tired of the manna. We're tired of the the desert. We're tired of following Moses. He's a, a derelict leader. We want to go back to Egypt. We're going to go with Korah, and at and in, and in, and within forty eight hours, three entire households. So we don't know how many people that was, but it was three entire camps, three three guys and everybody that was with them, women, children. Right, 250 Levites, and then 14,000 the next morning. So we're talking uh, close to 15,000 died just because of that inability to discern and or inability to submit to God's leadership, God, That's right. God's guy. So, see, it's not just here's the thing. It's not just oh, charismatic, charismatic. That's not gonna. That's you're 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 you're, you're wonky. Oh, Torah, 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 Torah. No charismatic. You're wonky. Revelation. You got to have the balance. You got to have both. You got to be a Torah observant, charismatic. That's your. That's how you. You at least can do this. Doesn't mean you're not going to screw it up. Doesn't mean you're going to mess it up because you are. Most of the time, you've got to have that balance. And you know, the the dividing line here was the fear of the Lord and saying no to sin. Fear of the Lord is everything. And the, it was the hiding of sin. It was the hiding of sin in this whole ministry that the Lord exposed. And it's not like people haven't committed, haven't committed those sins before. He wanted to see if they were going to be upright enough to say, I've sinned and go before the people. It's. And that's, you know what? This is where you, you said it. And last night you talk, we talked about this. The lack of leadership is because the ecclesia is not functioning the way he purposed it. And before he returns, I wrote something down last night, and it was right before I got off. You were still talking, and, it was, and I went back on YouTube and, and was watching from there. It was really, really good. And I was on a whole different uh, line with guys talking back then with Kevin Stahl and all those guys. And the interesting thing was, the next thing we're going to see, and this is going to scare the head, one are the prophets with wisdom and love, and I'm talking about Chameleon Church, people here, going to stand up in their own church and say, no, this has to be corrected. You, you can't go here. Where is the kingdom where is the gospel of the kingdom being preached and the demonstration of the gospel of the kingdom? We haven't seen that yet, but if this year is that year I'm thinking of and it scares me, I'm going, I'm an old man, but I need to stand up. That means I need to put myself in a place where I can stand up. And it can be in the circles that I travel in. I have to speak out, but we have to start telling people the truth. And I see people going, no, I'll just leave this ministry and go on to another one. I, yeah. These are some of the people I were talking to down there. I go, don't do that. I go, you better be bold and say it straight. Yeah. Again, again, that's why the, um, what's it called? The treasure hunting is such a good thing yeah. to do. Yes. Because you get yes. those juices flowing. You get the prophetic flowing. The, the You start just, you know, just take, dealing with the fear of man. You know, talking to strangers, telling telling a stranger about Jesus. You know, telling somebody about Jesus is one thing. 
Telling someone about Jesus and being able to read their mail or back it up with signs and wonders, that's the Jesus model right there. That's how Jesus did it. And that's, that's how right. he taught his disciples to do it. Uh, right. Christianity does it one way. Christianity does, they, they, they do the gospel of salvation. Jesus, 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 this is, these are tracks. You know, pamphlets, tracks, Jesus, 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 no signs and wonders, no power, no nothing, right? But if you show up and you heal someone, you show up and you read them their mail, you show up and there's a supernatural thing going on behind that word, you're, you know, you're more apt to catch that fish. And that's the model that Jesus gave. That's what Jesus said. When you go, go, saying this, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and then doing what? Heal their sick, cast out their demons, raise their dead. Supernatural, charismatica. That's why we think the, the treasure hunting is, is such a good way to get that going, get that process going. So why? why? Well then, to see if, if, you, if you're doing that, then when you're in the market and standing in line at the market, you could stir yourself up and prophesy over that cash register, the cashier, or the woman in front of you, or the Karen behind you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, because you're already in the flow. It's called exercise. It's muscle memory. But if you're not doing any of it, you're probably at home watching TBN or something. <laughs> Watching the Camille and George show. Instead of being out there with the people. Just messing with you. The other day, I, I picked up my computer, and it's right in front of the city hall here in Eureka. And on one side, there was about 30 of the Palestinian uh, flag wavers and some people in wheelchairs. And on the other side was the Hebrew they had the Hebrew flag out and they were just going there. And I was looking and I went over and a thought crossed my mind. I, you I, have that stuff going on in your town? Go, huh? You have that stuff going on in your town? Yep. Right in front of the of the uh, police station. You know why? Because we got Arcada. Th that's the throwback to all the old hippies. And, yeah. and Arcada is, you know, the Humboldt State College yeah. up there. Yeah. That's where they all the hang out. Yeah, it's all college. Sorry to interrupt you. I was just—I'm just amazed that you have that in your town because we don't—we don't have any of that stuff here. No, and on, on Saturday on the market, incredible farmers market. They're, they they just stand in a line and you have to walk up their little corridor. And you know, I just but when I saw this guy in a wheelchair and I'm going, do I got the guts to go over and pray for him in that Palestinian group? And I just go on board. I go help me because. I really, if I got prompted, you know, I know when he's prompting me and I'm going, he, I didn't put that thought in my own head. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going, stupid. I wouldn't think that. Yeah, I wouldn't think that. I'm going, <laughs> but are you telling me to go do that? To go lay hands on that guy in the wheelchair? Can I do that? And I'm just going, and the Lord says, in the days to come, you will be doing that. And I went, oh. And I'm just going, ha! Ah. But that's what he's going to call us to do. Yeah. And and the treasure hunting, he goes. Sometimes it's going to be dangerous. Yeah. And and I'm going, boy. If I'm preaching it with my lips, I better stand up and do it with my feet. Yeah. Remember, remember last night? Who was it that said, "Hey, thanks for uh, you know joining martyrdom." Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I heard that. Because if you do this thing right, yeah. it'll get you killed. Oh, thank you for it, yeah. Because, I mean, you think about it. Why did they kill Jesus? He said, what did I do? What, what, what's the charge? What did I do to, for you to want to kill me? All I did was heal the sick. That's if right. they were blind, I opened up their eyes. If they were deaf, I opened up their ears. If they couldn't walk, they could now walk. I preached the gospel to the poor. Which one are, are you know are you killing me for? I know. And then the, and then the disciples, the, the apostles. I know. Yikes! There's nothing romantic. Yeah, thank you for introducing me to martyrdom. There yeah. You go. There's nothing romantic about martyrdom. Nothing. No. 
But yes, you do risk. In the early Jesus movement, we wouldn't have hesitated running into a group like that and being the flower children among all the demons. <laughs> because that group didn't have murderous thoughts back then. Yeah, I know, that's true. They're, see, the, the, it's shifted. I know. Every, everything has shifted. It's a different day. It's a different day, which is why we, we've been thinking we're in, Re, what is it, Revelation 6, when the, the, that horse. He's been fed, honey. And there's, you know, lawlessness no, and, and violence and lawlessness in the earth realm right now. Oh. And we do need to use wisdom. We use discernment. It doesn't need to be romantic like that, you know. Oh, yeah, no, no. But if he does tell you, he's going to tell some of us. Yep. You know. And, and it does say, in, what is it, Revelation 13, if you're supposed to go to jail, you're going to go to jail. If you're supposed to die, you're going to die. Yeah. We're a coin in his spark pocket, and he can spend us any way he wants. Our, he, he bought our blood with his blood. We don't, we, we, he bought us. And we're owned by him, and he can do it. He can, yeah, disperse us, like you said, any way he wants. Yeah. That's another unpopular Christian thought. It's, 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 oof. There is a whirlwind of brewing. Yeah, there is. You, you can almost feel it. It's ramping up. You know, it just tells me how important the feast days are going to be this year. Really important to pay attention to them in our own personal lives. Oh, yeah. And getting ready for Shavuot. Yeah. Kingdom, our kingdom, what, what are we calling it? Uh, kingdom covenant? Kingdom, kingdom culture. Covenant. What are we calling this? Does anybody know what we're calling the conference? <laughs> <laughs> I know those two words are in it somewhere. <laughs> kingdom culture. Kingdom culture, there you go. That's why we're calling it kingdom culture, because we are going to be talking about that we're going to have examples of various because kingdom culture doesn't look it's not it's not like one way it doesn't look one way you know it's going to look different for me and how god does me and does you know then then lenny and linda or uh my daughter shondell and, and her husband joel or my daughter safrain or my son corn and his wife elise it's all going to look different for all these different people because that's just so you know in the same way we're all different types of people we all have different fields we all have different anointings we all have but it's all kingdom you know we, right. we we see that in the narrative 12 disciples in four groups of three and they were all kind of different how they were used yeah and that's what he said he said you will occupy until i come and we're supposed to demonstrate it here's a question and, lenny huh Uh, I, you know, possibly that's part of it. Remember, in the red letters, if we go back to the context, we just read it and we stopped short of verse 15. Jesus said, after he told them, what was going to happen that first three and a half years? He says, and this is the gospel of the kingdom. So the kingdom culture and demonstration is to do what we've been doing, what we should be doing, empowered by the Holy Ghost, demonstrating his authority. But that gospel of the kingdom, that good news was that he's coming back to take over. And that's got to be on our lips along with that. That's when you're healing the sick, you're telling him because he's coming back. Here's the authority and the deposit that he's given us to see you healed. 
I and, don't know if I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I don't know if they're the keys to the kingdom, but I guarantee yeah. you they're at least the chassis. Yeah. Yeah. They're definitely involved with the mechanics. Right. I don't know if they're the keys, but I would rather I would think the chassis. It's it's read the read the he he needs to read the whole thing where he says what the keys were. If you look at the keys, what's been unlocked is us for to be able to overcome the work of the devil. Because the Pharisees had the the, the, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees and the Sadducees had the feast, and it didn't them nothing. Didn't do nothing for them because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. Right, they, you they got to have the Holy Spirit because that were, unlocks the authority. They were by the we, we destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. And he says, those gates, we have the keys that opens the gates. They can't prevail against us. They cannot. So I would have to say that the key is the authority given to us. And I mean, there's a lot of speculation what it could and what it couldn't be. But it, but it has to do with the fact of what we've been given by the power of the Holy Spirit to represent him. Right. And I'm and, and here we're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. I was definitely that's where I was going next. Because with just the Torah isn't good enough. And 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 we're seeing that just charismatica isn't good enough. You've got to have that balance. The word and the spirit. Yeah. Yep. Obedience is a huge key. I think, yeah, I think there's, yeah, there's various things. I mean, obedience is everything too. I mean, that's, that's huge. Hmm. Obedience is just our demonstration of our own love towards him. And, uh, You know, it's interesting because we were talking earlier about just the devastation and that what it's going to bring in that whole camp of those who idolize their worshipers, those who have worshipped and how they've fallen. And uh, when a person operates in the word and the spirit, Man, that has been so misunderstood in so many Christian circles. It's unbelievable. They don't understand the power of the Torah and the fear of the Lord and the power of the Spirit to convince men of righteousness, sin, and judgment that when you have that combined with that, you have authority from heaven to cast out demons, man. You have the authority to lay your hands on the sick and men and women would rise from the dead. It's because of that conviction of the Holy Spirit, a righteousness, a fear of the Lord and the Torah behind it, which is the living word that gives you that. And Christianity, I'm, I'm sorry, it just the Western church has reduced that to uh, an emotional feeling. And uh, a place where you feel satisfied within yourself. And uh, that's getting rocked. It's getting knocked down. Yeah, yeah that's, that's crazy. As, as much as I love the worship, and, and it brings me back to Jesus' words, they that worship the Father must worship him in spirit and truth. Yeah. Because that thing did affect me last week. I mean, like I, when you first told me, I'm going, no, that should be to the core. <sighs> yeah, same here. 
and I don't get affected by stuff like that. I know. Um, yeah, we're, we're we're gonna make a statement this week about it. If you're if you, but it's not fair for not letting people know what we're talking about. There was a an incident. Well, there was a report last Wednesday regarding two prominent worship leaders that uh, admitted or were con- you know confronted uh, with a, a bunch of goofy stuff, sexual immorality, drugs, alcohol, and just lying and potential blackmail and all sorts of goofy stuff. Prominent worship leaders from two different camps that worked around the same circuits that decided to hook up. <laughs> and just the lack of the fear of God in this situation. And it's, and, it's, and it's happening in a ministry that's already under fire by because of its main leader being uh, exposed with some sexual and you know issues. So this entire global ministry is being Jeez. And it's affected the sane part of the prophetic camp. That's the problem. There's a lot of different camps out there, but well <laughs> these three people, the main guy and these two worship leaders, touch a lot of other ministries. Unbelievable amount. Like almost all of them. Yeah. Literally. Uh, around the world. So, talk about taking down something. I mean, that's why we were. I was saying there's a, there's a, there's certain ministers out there that should be saying something and they're not. So it's um uh, it's gotten goofy. It's getting goofier, and it's it's going to get even goofier. Yep. We ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, my wife always says that, and she's saying it to me right now. The speed of the leader is the speed of the game, and that's just. The speed of the leaders, the speed of the gang. <clears throat> and that's really true, and especially here in this situation, because of the leader is getting a, you know, the leader was blowing it. You can't be surprised if the underlings are. I mean, you lead by example. And what do I say? Leaders that don't lead hurt. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Crazy stuff. Peter said that judgment must first come to the house of God. Absolutely. And and, Absolutely. It, and remember, this is just a mild shaking. This is just internal stuff. Remember what Jesus said. He goes, and there will be false prophets among you that will lead you astray that even the elect will have to double down on their discernment. And that's my own phraseology. And that we haven't. We've seen some of that, but that's coming. And so he's going to raise up the righteous prophets to confront them. And, that, and, and, that's, and that's not going to go over well. No one likes to be rebuked. No one likes being corrected. No one nope. likes being called out. Who are you to judge me? The, Jesus, the Bible says not to judge. And they, it's like, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, Muppet. I mean, you just expose yourself when you say something stupid like that. And they do it all the time. I mean, in, in so many different ways, they expose, we don't know what the Bible actually says. We just, we just know these one-liners. We wear a t-shirt. We're a soundbite. We're, it's a, it's, we're made, we, we don't actually have any theology or doctrine. We just have sound bites. <laughs> this is. This is there's a scary to say, but you can relate to this. Just go back 50 years and you can remember this because or 40 years ago. Back then they would say, you know what the false prophet is? It's the Mormon. It's the Jehovah Witness. It's the guy living in a double wide. Those aren't the false prophets. The whole cult thing wasn't the false prophets. They would really say that they're the ones that we got to watch out for. And then they, they would show their own personal doctrine. Well, here, here's <sighs> another reason why, here's another reason why I was saying that the false prophet could, you know, yeah, it's definitely a person, I think, but it's also a spirit. 
That's and I mentioned that pastor, that yeah. pastor that has converted to Islam because of the, the, the crisis in Gaza. I guess, I don't know if he went there, but, it, but whatever he saw, you know, the, the, with, oh, the poor Palestinian, whatever, uh, he's, he's, he's renounced Christianity and has converted to, to Islam. But then if you look at the guy's last 10 years of his life, the guy was all over the map on the left, you know, pro BLM and all that stuff. The guy never knew who Jesus was. This guy was, this guy was a charlatan from the very, from the get go. Right. And, and he's, he's gonna, he's now becoming a, a poster boy for the Christian left for the, 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 the deconstructionist, because that's probably the least intelligent crowd I know. Uh, it's one thing to be a, 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 a left wing liberal, that's one thing, but to be a left leaning, a left wing liberal Christian is, is even even more of a drop in in, in, in in intelligence. It's just anyway. That's a lot of false stuff going on in that poor guy's head to the extent that now he's he's converted. It's just insane. Hey, um, let's get a let's get a cup of coffee. Go yes. uh, Go get your go. Uh, what's it called when they uh, when they get a top off your coffee? What's it called? What's the what's the term? Somebody help me here. What's, fill up. What's the what's the waitress say when she comes to? Do you want to fill up? To top it off or whatever. I don't know. What whatever that is, go do it. Perfect timing. There you go. <laughs> We're getting better. Oh my gosh. I'm getting some blue skies out the window. It's change of pace. Yeah, we we've been hitting low high forties, low fifties. We have no winter. I mean, literally. Uh, so you know, I, I love the Facebook memories because it's a great timeline of what you're what you were doing that day, uh, as far back you know as it goes, but. And the fact that it's been a year, I don't know where the time went literally, but a year ago yesterday was when my wife and I walked in our backyard and it was like three and a half plus feet above the ground. So the top of, the, of our fence was like here because the, the, the packed snow in our backyard was, was over three and a half feet tall. Jeez. And we were walking in it and she was falling in holes and we were both falling in holes and I was anyway and we took video of it because we were, we had to get to the back corner because the snow had moved one of the, the like the fence and the dogs were just they, they the fence didn't matter the, the dogs were just jumping over because it was so high they're you know right the ground it was like here's the if this is the fence 
And there's the ground. It was like that now because the, the ground was so high. That was a year ago. Jeez. We have no snow. Really? It has it. We got 12 feet last week in Tahoe and Mammoth. I mean, the, the, the resorts, you know, okay, 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 feet, yes. But here in town? Nothing. Yikes. My, my side, the side of my driveway had eight feet, what's it called? Drifts, you know? Yeah. A year ago. There's nothing there. It's weird. So we, yeah, it's been unseasonably warm and it's uh, in the high forties, low fifties. And I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's only March. We could, you know, you know, you know, that we, could could change get, in an instant. we could get hammered here through June. We could get, well, we I could heard the report, report you're supposed to Wednesday or Thursday, get what we had. Hmm. So that could be coming your way. So I'm not complaining, I, but if it's going to warm up, warm up, none of this right messing around i do love the fact that we've sprung forward this is when it should stay like this forever it should never go back again i don't know why they keep doing that just leave it alone we're talking about the weather that's how silly this has gotten we're talking about yeah the we're talking about the weather instead of telling you the truth of what's really happening because we would i think we would scare you so we decided not <laughs> what do you think to about the weather? white house uh trying to walk back everything biden said <laughs> Oh I God. love that meme, one meme. Oh, he looks fit enough to stand trial. Because <laughs> that actually happened. The report says, yeah, the guy's guilty, but he's old, and he, and he wouldn't be able to handle trial. But he's guilty. No. You can't do that. No. Oh, it's just so, this dude, do you have any idea what the next seven months are going to be like? Oh, it's gonna be brutal. It's gonna be brutal. Uh, oh my gosh! There's gonna be hair pulling everywhere. All I can think about is every worst case scenario. For, in order for them to do what they're going to do, what I what I think they they're going to do because they want to do it. Something has has to happen so they can. In, oh man, I don't even want to say the words. And we got to pray. We have to pray. And we have to fight. Yeah, but what if we already sealed our fate four years ago? Still got to fight. It's like, we, we get, got, I we gave you, I gave you, I gave you a chance out and you didn't take it. So now you're going down. You got to fight for that sheep nation. Every time I look around, it looks like I'm in a goat state. Well, I, I live in a goat heck? state. I live in a goat state for a long time. I'm a little safer up here, but do you realize just three hours south, you can steal up to $1,000 and get away with it. And you won't, you won't be convicted. And they're doing it. That's why they're everybody's leaving San Francisco in droves. It's crazy, man. The whole East End is bottled up there. And no one's. It's an area I used to hang out in. I'm going, man, it's, it's, there's parts of that place that's a like ghost town. Not a good place to live, put it that way. Yikes. But Utah? Utah is... Well, my confusion is then, then the, the, their church is, is, is complicit. Yes. There's no way anybody can say with a straight face that, the, that their church isn't involved in the state government. That's, that's insane. You can't say that. No. If they're Everybody hiding, that's not true. If they're hiding sin internally, what are they going to do externally? We're seeing the demise of what we're going to know. Well, I don't know if it's the demise of it. 
in fact, it's probably the changeover to full beast spirit, antichrist spirit um, influence. The whole woke left progressive agenda. That's the scary part because this guy that's going to come on the scene is going to have a mixture of all of it. Remember, he's going to be hated from within and he's going to be hated from without. He's not going to be this great orator. He, he, he's small in stature. He has a lot of influence, but the West is going to hate him and his own people are going to hate him. And he's going to have a little bit of mixture of anything and everything. Yikes. Can we can we just go back a few years and just talk about nice nice things? Yeah. Happy things. I, I often wonder what we'd be talking about if the rabbi was on the show with us. Oh my <laughs> Sorry. god. I shouldn't have brought that up. <laughs> trigger, trigger. Oops. Jeez. Uh, you still talking about speaking in tongues? Sorry. That whole that whole that whole group over there is <sighs> so weird you know what we should do for the last 20 minutes is, is what hey do you know how to do you know how to look at the private messages between us see where it says private chat yeah Oh, I want to remind everybody, Alan's going to be speaking Thursday night. This Thursday night on the Branch Forerunner Ministry. We'll have it recorded, but you will have to send me your email if you wanted to get on the Zoom live. And you would send your email to LennyParada at gmail.com. I'll put it down there. What was that? Someone saying they thought about him last night? No. Oh man. So, where are we at? Where are we at? Fifteen more minutes. Do, you have, do we have anything else to say? I was looking at the the. see what's out there what are you thinking of uh... I'm not thinking about anything I'm thinking about having to go look at your notes and watching your last two Thursdays so I know what's going on so I know what I'm talking about on Thursday well the first one was introduction and uh, the next one was uh, all about showing that chapters 22 and 23 were the lead up. It was his last message to um, the public, his last message to the religious system, all the woes to the scribes and the Pharisees. And then chapter 24, the first part of it, which we got to, was his red letters of that first three and a half years of the beginning of sorrows and what that yeah. would look like. What, what he called the gospel of the kingdom. That's where we stopped because he made an emphasis twice about, he goes, you're going to have to deal with the issue of false prophets and you're going to need discernment because they come from within. Yeah. It's interesting. And I bring it up. I mean, so obviously we talked about this, but I uh, talked about this stuff and uh, this thing is spiritual. Right. And how the term false prophet doesn't even show up in the old Testament. It's, it's a new Testament phrase. In the Old Testament, he said, well, even if he is false, I sent him your way to test you to make sure, test your resolve to make sure that you would obey me and not be swept away by some charlatan that could, had some mojo. Watch me pull the rabbit out of my hat. Oh, That's right. What does that say about us? <laughs> I don't know. What does it say? It tells you how messed up our understanding of Jesus is, really does. 
as the Messiah. Uh, if you miss Thursday, don't worry about it. We'll have it posted in YouTube the day after. So will that be uh, the day after? Will that be a first month day after or a 13th month day after? That'll be the 13th month. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Not a first month. Get out your calendars and write a zero one on today. That's on your, right. For your 13th month calendar. It's that leap year. We leapt forward. Austin, you are very welcome. Glad to be of service. You know what's really fun? To, here's what's really fun for me is seeing the progression of people going out and looking for the new moon yeah. taking pictures posting getting excited and anticipant to see it and then seeing it to me i can't I, how much more exciting can that be because that means people are getting it people are doing it they're 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 wanting to walk in obedience they're seeing it one they're seeing in the bible where it says you need to do this hopefully people are blowing their shofars while they're seeing it because uh, that's the actual instruction. Go, find the new moon, see it, blow your shofar. So hopefully you're all y'all are blowing your shofars when you see it. But that means people are reading the Bible and going, "Oh, this actually this is actually a thing," yeah. and and then and then doing it, and then the amount of people that are doing it now, and it's just been this progressive trickle of of growth in that area, and that's mm -hmm. awesome to me. It's exponential because that means. Other things are taking root. Other things are are happening in their lives. I'm hoping, right? And um, you know, like like tassels, people wearing tassels, or starting to wear tassels, or understanding the fees and wanting to. That's exciting. You know, my brothers bugged his kids so much that Jana from uh, North Carolina sent the picture of the new moon to him first when she saw it yesterday. <laughs> and, he got it to me, and then he sent, sent me his own picture. He's always faithful. He, him and Deanna will go out there looking for that new moon. They'll go driving around looking for that new moon so he can get a picture of it and then post it on Van. Yeah, it's exciting to see. Yeah. It really I'm is. trying to find where, where Chris has the con – oh, there it is. I was. I wanted to do this. Yeah, if you haven't registered for the conference yet um, – there's the link. If you were there last year and haven't registered yet, I'm going to come a knocking. I got a list. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, Ron, Ron, Ron it was good to see Ron and Diana when uh, we were in L.A. back in November. November, December, whenever the Hogan thing was. was oh, when you went to go see Hogan, yeah. He was excited. Well, my niece went nuts. She loved it. Almost everyone that's on here will be on Thursday night because they're already there. So, and I got to send two more out to uh, Nathalie and uh, Aspen. They want the link. Cool. Well, it'll be fun. I mean, I'll. Yeah. I'll. I'll uh, I, I've got to basically go figure out. There, uh, that. I'll, but I'll remember, be... it's six o'clock my time. At seven. Okay, that's seven o'clock mine. Yep. That's easy. Yeah. Would be nice. Yeah, we went out last night and blew the show far in the rain. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. By faith, I knew it was on the other side of those clouds. <laughs> Me and the dog. He was out there watching me. He just wants to sniff that shofar. That's he wants all. to chew on it. That's a chew toy. I know. He wants to eat it. He's jumping on my leg. He wanted to bite that thing. Oh, you know, cease fire. Everybody wants to cease fire. Yep. Yeah, they're 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 lobbing rockets right now. So yeah, cease fire this. Tanya, you keep throwing rocks at my house. I will keep going over to your house, beating your face in. 
Oh, Is dude. today the first day of Ramadan? Yeah, no, that was yesterday, I think. Yesterday, okay. So that's an interesting thing you should bring up because all they have to do is do some false Ramadan false flag somewhere. It's just keep stirring up that pot, making yeah, people yeah. turn against Israel more and more and more. I, I saw something about Ireland. Ireland is boycotting South by Southwest bands. Irish bands are boycotting South by Southwest in Austin because of the mili- of, of because of our U.S. military's advertising there and their involvement in the Gaza conflict. And so Ireland's like, yeah, we're not going to go to Austin and play that festival. We're going to boycott it because of the military advertising. What's with that? It's like. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, the, I've been saying this for decades. The anti-Semitic spirit is one of the most ancient spirits in the, in the earth realm, in the world, in the, in the spirit realm as well. It's one of the most ancient spirits out there. And it has been, it's on steroids right now. And we ain't seen nothing yet, man. No. Because Israel is, it's still, it's still a confined thing. Yes. The world hasn't done this to it yet. And you know, they have to, that alignment, that covenant of death that Ezekiel talks about still hasn't happened yet. Yeah, the whole Armageddon thing, none of that's that's even happened yet. That hasn't even happened yet, where there's there's peace and safety. Nothing's happened yet. We haven't seen their, their, their unwalled villages yet. That's yet to come. And everybody's going to go, oh, see, now everybody loves Israel. And then the fangs are going to come out. Come on. And the next seven to nine months. Watch. So prophetically, so Here's a question. Out of the seven churches in the Revelation, chapters two and three, only one of them was doing good, huh? Philadelphia. The other six, there was a problem. He had a problem with them. Yeah, he had had corrections for all of them, but that one. And it says they had but a little strength, but they did not deny his name. And if you you really think about what that means, that means the prophetic understanding of who Yeshua is as the spirit of prophecy and him as Messiah. But they were small. So who's the math people out there? So six out of seven, is that 90% fell rate? (laughs) There you go. Think about it. I mean, we want, Christianity so wants to believe that nothing can go wrong, you know, everyone's going to be, you know, we're all good to go, you know, which means they have to, there another, another, we're, we got four towns being attacked right now, which means they totally ignore the, the 10 virgins and the fact that half of them were left behind. But if six out of seven churches in the revelation are being spanked, that's not a that's not, that's not a high percentage. That's not a good. Those aren't good odds. No. What did I post a couple of weeks ago? We have to be like the Church of Philadelphia and minister to the Church of Laodicea or something like that. It's crazy. Oh, look at this. Eighty-five point seven percent. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's that. Here we go. That's all we need. Thank you, Roxanne, for bringing in that that wisdom. <laughs> We're there all gonna go. get raptured out of here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no one. We don't have to worry about anything. That's oh, awesome. Really? 87, 85.7 percent. That's bad. So you see, you 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 hear me always say eighty percent, eighty percent, eighty percent. That's a Lance Wallnauism. I'm always looking for the twenty percent. That will not only hear and see, but embrace and, and apply. The other eighty percent, right over their head, or they could care less, or they'll oppose you. Yeah. 
Yep. Yes, this is true, but it's always, but it's also on us to make sure our selection is secure. That's right. We do have a, a, a role to play in that. That's exactly right. So I'm going to, my big milestone is to get this second field manual done and in print in time for the conference. It looks like I'm going to, looks like I'm going to, that's going to, I'm going to be able to do that. Um, and then sometime between now and the end of the year, I want to get Romans out. That's like, that's going to be, that's going to take some work. Yeah. Um, most of it is already transcribed. It's just now taking the transcriptions and cleaning it up and putting it in, into a book form. So that's exciting. That and I am I am going to sequester myself in the studio. I have to. I, uh, uh, I feel like I'm wasting away. I've never gone this long without doing music ever in my life. I mean, even at the beginning of my life. I, I at least was recording when I was 12 years old. Are you going to do that after Shavuot? Music? Yeah. I'm hoping to start before Shavuot. Oh, that'll be nice. It's when our, your brother gets back from Hawaii. <laughs> Chris? <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. But no, we're, we're getting that <clears throat> second field manual done once and for all. Yeah. That would be nice. Maybe we can, we can purchase them when we get to the Shavuot conference. Bring a load of them with you. Covenant culture. Yeah, well, it's you know, it's, it's so weird that with this the timeline on that book. It's been three years, which is just really crazy. The um, we you know, I was half not halfway, well, a little bit more than halfway, no, just under halfway done with it when COVID lifted, and I was able to co promote the first one that came out during COVID, and so that pushed. I, so that I used that to push everything forward. And then got lost that one that last year, so it'll be good. Yeah, it'll be good to have it off my plate once and for all. So, what else? What else? What else? You got anything you got else? That's it. See you Thursday night. Yeah. Um, remind me. <laughs> I'm just will. false I'll prophets. Remember. I'll remember. I'll Folks, remember. Join us. Um, I'll reach out to you and I'll look at I'll look at the material and um, so we will see some of you guys on on Thursday night I guess eh? yeah cool hey Lenny thank you for your input as always thanks for being here appreciate it I love it bless you guys yeah thank Linda for, for me for letting you uh, do this on Tuesday mornings we'll talk to you soon You're listening to Chameleon Church. Biblical antidotes for the modern man. With your host, Alan Aguirre. The views and opinions expressed during our broadcasts are solely those of the broadcast producers, hosts, and or guests, etc., and are not necessarily the views or opinions of the Travelog Network, its sponsors, or affiliates.